Hey guys, welcome to your 29-2 notes. Today we're going to be talking about the heritage of Greece and Rome. We are first going to begin talking about Greece. And we'll start off with Greece's geographic setting. So let's take a look at this topographical map of Greece. Um, the first thing you should probably notice right off the bat is how mountainous it is. Okay, so Greece is located on the mountainous Balkan Peninsula. Um, literally mountain ranges all over the place. So um, this served as um, sort of a challenge to these early cities that started developing in Greece because they were sort of cut off from one another, right? If you have these big mountain ranges right in the middle of everything, um, it's not necessarily easy to travel from city to city. So because of that, these Greek communities were cut off from each other, okay? They were very separate. Because of that, um, these communities in Greece, they eventually grow into city-states, which are, uh, that's a large town with its own government that controls the surrounding countryside. So even though all of these different cities were within this area of Greece itself, um, they were very separate. They had um, different laws, different rules, different governments. They were not the same culturally, okay? So even though they were in this same area of Greece, these city-states uh, were oftentimes vastly different from one another. At the center of each city-state was an acropolis or a hilltop fortress. So this acropolis would usually be built on high ground, um, you know, usually a hill or maybe even a mountainside. Um, the purpose of an acropolis was to have this safe, like I said, fortress um, that would protect the citizens of these city-states in case of an invasion from, um, you know, a warring city-state or another kingdom, okay? So, um, obviously, high ground is an advantage, so that's where these cities, or these acropolis, um, these acropolises <laughs> on these city-states were built. So, the most famous acropolis was in the city-state of Athens, okay? So, um, the Parthenon is a very famous structure. It's actually still standing today. You've probably seen pictures of it, even if you didn't know what exactly it was or where it was located. So here is a model of what the Acropolis in Athens would have looked like in its prime. Okay, so um, down here, this would have been the entrance to the Acropolis. So it's through this, you know, very grand looking building, but really all that is is sort of like a grand entrance to the Acropolis. Um, the Acropolis was obviously built on the top of a hill. There would have been sort of a series of, you know, zigzagging stairs on the way up to this Acropolis. So um, as the people would have got through the entrance to the Acropolis, one of the first things that they would have seen right here is a statue of the goddess Athena. So um, Athens was named after Athena, okay? Um, she is um, sort of the god that represents Athens. Um, and then right over here, you see the Parthenon, which uh, that would have been a temple, okay? The Parthenon started out as um, basically a temple for the Greeks living in Athens. And then there's a series of other buildings uh, surrounding the Acropolis that had different functions for, you know, different things, okay? So, um, Sort of a neat story of how, you know, Athens got its name. I told you that the patron goddess of Athens was Athena. So, um, some sort of Greek mythology for you here. Um, how Athens originally got its name, legend has it, is that, you know, uh, these Greeks were building this city. They didn't have a name for it yet, but it was significant enough now that it needed a name, okay? This small community had grown into a very large community. They needed a name for this city. So um, they sent a message to the gods saying, okay, uh, any god who's interested in, in having our city named after you, if you can give us some sort of gift, we will, you know, pick which god or goddess we're going to name our city after. So one of the gods that was interested in having this city named after him was Poseidon, okay? So Poseidon is the god of the sea, okay? So um, he goes to Athens, and his gift to Athens is he takes his trident, 
which, you know, is this um, sort of spear-looking thing with three prongs, and he stabs it into the ground. And as he stabs into the ground, water starts bubbling out of the ground and creates this well. And, you know, the people of Athens are like, oh, you know, that's pretty cool. A well is definitely super useful up here on the top of our Acropolis, which is where Poseidon had stabbed his trident into the ground, was up at the Acropolis. Um, you know, that would be very helpful if you're stuck up on the Acropolis during warring times. It, it's definitely beneficial to have water. Okay, but then somebody notices, uh-oh, this is salt water because Poseidon is the god of the sea. So they're like, oh, well, we can't do that much with salt water. We can't really drink it. We can't do much with it. Eh, I mean, this gift is okay, but it's not the best. Okay, so then Athena, she comes. She, she comes to the city, and she's interested in having it named after her. So what she does is she plants an olive tree on the Acropolis. The olive tree grows and the people realize, oh, we can kind of do a lot with this olive tree. We can eat the olives off of the tree. We can press the olives and squeeze the oil out of them. And we can use it for cooking purposes or to dip our bread in. We can use the wood from this tree for construction of things. And they're like, you know what? This is a very useful gift. So Athena won the competition and Athens was named after Athena. So uh, the people of Athens honored Athena in many different ways. Obviously, this huge statue of her. And there was also a statue of Athena within the temple of the Parthenon itself. Okay. So this is what the Acropolis in Athens looks like today. Um, obviously, it's not uh, in the best of shape. Right. But, um, you know, it's still standing. So that's pretty impressive that, you know, some 2,000 odd years later, it's still around. Okay, here's another picture of the Parthenon. You can see these massive columns, super impressive. And here is that giant statue of Athena that I was telling you about. So this statue of Athena was actually made of ivory and gold. So uh, would have been a very expensive statue to make, okay? Uh, where you see like the skin color on Athena, that was all made of ivory. And all of her clothing, all of the, the crowns, the shield that she has was all made from gold. So unfortunately, throughout history, this, this statue was somehow lost, misplaced, something happened to it, but there's, there's no record of exactly what happened to it. So we know that it existed, we know that it resided within the Parthenon, but we, we don't know what's happened to it. It's lost to history. All right, so here is sort of a map of what the Acropolis in Athens would have looked like. Okay, we can see the Parthenon right here, which we know was their temple. Um, right through here, this is that entryway that I showed you earlier. Several other different, th different buildings. Um, here we have um, some arenas. So this is, you know, where the Greeks would have went to watch different plays, performances, things like that. And those are actually still in use today. Uh, even today, people can go to these same arenas and watch modern day people putting on these Greek uh, comedies and, and tragedies. All right. Um, we also have right here the Stoa of Eumenes. Um, and that was like a store, okay? That was like a marketplace that people could go to get goods. People would set up every day with different booths there and they would sell their goods there. So, you know, if you needed to uh, get some milk or something, you could send your spouse to the Stoa to get it. Get it? The Stoa? Yeah, I know you guys like my jokes. All right, so in this picture here, these... This, um, you can still kind of see it here. This is where the Stoa of Eumenes was located. So that's where the people would have set up their marketplace. Um, there's also the Erechtheion. So this was like a storehouse. This is basically where the Greeks kept a lot of their treasured items. Okay, it was the, Erec the Re Erechtheion, excuse me. Um, it had those beautiful columns that we know that the Greeks always did. And it also has this very interesting porch here um, that is carved to look like um, females, okay? It has sort of like a female uh, figure, dresses, things like that. 
So some things that were rumored to be stored in the Erechtheion was a wooden statue of Athena, uh, the marks of Poseidon's trident, so where he stabbed his trident into the ground to create the saltwater well, which also the saltwater well was said to be located in the Erechtheion. The sacred olive tree that Athena gave to the city was supposed to be in there. Um, many tombs of Athens' early kings, and also the sacred snake of the temple. Whatever that guy is, he's supposed to be in there. Okay, so uh, those those women on that um, sort of porch I was showing you a second ago, those are called the Caryatids. Um, so this is also called the Maiden's Porch. Okay, because you can see they're carved to be made to look like maidens or women. Um, very interesting sort of history about these uh, these maidens. Um, they, uh, well, we have to go back in history a little bit. You know, we've talked a lot about how in the 1800s, the big Brad British came in and sort of uh, messed everything up. Well, in Greece, it was no different. We're talking about ancient times, you know, right now, but fast forward way to the future. And the British decided they thought uh, they needed to take one of these caryatids and put it in a museum. So they actually took one out of the porch and then later on, they actually made an exact replica of it and stuck it back on there. So they did such a good job that um, just looking at them, you would never be able to tell which ones are the real ones and which ones are not. Okay. All right. And one more just little piece of history for you about the Parthenon. So you can see the Parthenon, you know, obviously we talked about how it's not in the best shape. And part of that is because... Um, during a war, um, part of its roof got blown off, okay? So when the Greeks controlled uh, Athens, you know, they had the Parthenon as a temple. Later on, um, Greece was conquered by the Ottoman Empire, and the Parthenon was actually turned into a mosque, which is a Muslim house of worship. And during that time, um, there was a, a war that went on with the British, um, against the Ottoman Empire, and unfortunately, uh, the Turks were storing their gunpowder in the Parthenon, and well, an explosion happened, and it basically blew the roof off the place. So that's why it's in sort of such a bad state of disrepair today. All right, guys, I'm going to stop right there, and in the next video, we will talk about Greek ideas about government. See you there.